The Bible begins to tell us in Proverbs 16, 22, understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. Is understanding is a wellspring. It is a source of life. It's what causes a man to live a, 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 a life, a full life, when they, have an, when they have the right understanding about life and about how it functions. I want to speak particularly today about the understanding of the intent of God concerning a man's life. Uh, the general structure, that understanding for the general structure and, and the way that God made man to operate. There's certain things that, um, irrespective of uh, whatever your different course of life is, these uh, three things here should be consistent. The way God created man, uh, there were three things that he created and set as sort of a system that in this boundary, these three pillars should be the essence of your life. These should be the three most important aspects and keys and dimensions of your life. That your entire being should devote yourself to mastering your relationship with these three aspects of your life. Number one, the man's relationship with God. When he first created Adam, it was just, it was originally man and God on this earth. And God created man and gave him dominion over the entire cosmos or the, or the entire world. That was the first relationship. That relationship is important because as man's creator, Adam can't find purpose. Adam can't find meaning until he connects to the source. He came from, he didn't come from, he didn't originate from himself. The Bible says the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. A man can't find his own way in himself because he didn't make himself. And so he has to be connected to his source, God. That relationship, a life of constantly searching and inquiring into this eternal God, a life of studying him, a life of seeing him. Everything in this physical realm reveals God, a life of meditating on his, his, uh, his works, meditating on his testimonies, seeing his power, seeing his glory, a life of fulfilling assignments that he's given you, a life of relating with him, a life of fellowship with him. That's the first aspect of a full life, that relationship with God, that relationship with God. A man can't live a full and a complete life without him seeing that man was created in God's image and likeness. He's, res he's supposed to, uh, amongst many of the assignments of, of man, is to reflect God's glory on this earth. Is to manifest God through himself. It's not just to come around and do random things. No. Uh, number two, the man's purpose and assignment. His purpose and assignment, that which he has been called to do on this earth. If a man is not connected to that, he cannot live a complete life. And there's a reason why I put God first, because that purpose and assignment comes from him. Man is sent to this earth for a specific purpose. Jesus said, I have come to do the will of him that sent me. And that's the perfect man. That's Christ is exactly the way a man is supposed to function. He's God's perfect example of a man. And he had the right mindset, that kingdom mindset. I have come to fulfill a purpose. He says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I'm not satisfied. That's my food. I'm not satisfied until I complete my assignment on this earth. Knowing your lot, your part, what God has called you to do specifically. And you can, um, in detail, you can, uh, if someone asks you to write a paper on you, you can write a paper. God has called me to do bum, 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 bum. And I could list it to you. You see that? Descriptively. You know, with a certain intelligence, I know that God is called me to do these things and he's given me the right equipment and the right tools and the right people around me and I'm building day by day and it's increasing. The number two is the purpose and the assignment. The purpose and the assignment. That, again, I'm speaking about um, the understanding. Understanding being a wellspring of life. A wellspring of life, a source of that word for life. In fact, let's go to that scripture. It says a wellspring of of life one of the one of the definitions is sustenance it's a source of sustenance it's what sustains a man it's what keeps a man intact mentally 
spiritually and more when man is outside of the order of the spirit that's when commotion and nonsense comes it's what keeps things sound is what keeps a man's mind sound that's why there's a lot of craziness in the world because men are walking outside of the order of the spirit outside of the system and, and the structure in which God created man to live in God purpose or slash assignment and number three is uh, of course family and human relationships of course uh, and having the right relationships and the relationship is um supposed to help to align you to that purpose when God created Adam he brought Eve he created Eve out of necessity because he realized that man uh, the 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 sex of men the gender the, the male gender cannot survive without the female gender he cannot fulfill his assignment without her and so she came as a helper you see that and so all your human relationships should come to help to you fulfill purpose not just people to hang around with not just people to have fun with not just people to waste time with but people that come and come to help you fulfill purpose just like Jesus and the 12 apostles he wasn't just bouncing around those are people that are going to come help him do his ministry come help him fulfill his ministry and when he leaves this earth and ascends to heaven they'll continue the ministry you see that and he says you guys are my friends because you you're uh, joining hands with me to do the will of the father your friend biblically is he or she that helps you to fulfill your ministry. It's not just people, you're just hmm? those kind of relationships. People that God has put a certain vision on your spirit. And you put, the Bible says, walk with wise men and become wise. You surround yourself with men of wisdom, women of wisdom. Because that's the vision that's put on your spirit. You see a certain path that God has placed you on. And there's people that have went ahead of you, went ahead of you and have... Uh, experience some bumps on the path that you should not have to go through if you're wise you'll pick from them that was just the whips of the wise are wellspring of life when you know how to take heed to wisdom and and how to honor them that have been set ahead of you which the young generation is lacking because we think we want Bible we think uh, we think we're the only people to live on this earth when there's nothing new under the sun. There are people that have went through exactly what you're going through. You're not the first person to be in a relationship. You're not the first person to be young. You're not the first person to be in a body, you know, and there are people that have been here before you, years and thousands of years before you. You see that? And so the wise man, the Bible says the wise, the wise man increases learning. They never stop learning. That's the meekness of wisdom. They inquire, they seek to get wisdom. And if you heed to rebuke, you will met or remain among the living. And so, um, again, number three was family and human relationships. And the dead life, the, the life, the lifeless uh, human, the, the lifeless course of living is the one that is not connected to these three things. That relationship with God, their purpose in God, and then the uh, adequate relationships that help them to fulfill that purpose that they have in God just those three things that's the three things Adam had in the beginning in a perfect world he had his relationship with God his assignment and then his family and it's it, if when you struck when life is structured that way it's it helps you to be efficient it helps you to not waste simple my relationship with God my assignment family Relationship with God, assignment, family. Anything outside of that is inefficient. I want to give you this opportunity if you, if it is that you want to give your life uh, to Christ. A lot of these things may seem very um, weird to someone with uh, not having the hear to the ear to hear. So, if you want to give your life to Christ uh, when Christ comes into you, Bible says. Uh, um, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. You know, when you don't have the capacity to understand some spiritual things. Not everything I'm speaking is so deep, but there are certain things that, uh, certain understandings that are privy to the saints, that are privy to those who have the life of God in them. And so you have to be invited into this, this kingdom, this realm, to understand certain things. And so if it is that you want to give your life to Christ, say this with me. Father, I thank you for sending your son to die for me. And he went to the grave and descended into hell. 
and set the captives free and he rose again for my glory and I receive his life in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.